Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo. We're back in the island today, building a habitat for possibly the most beautiful animal in the game. And we're going to be building it using a brand new piece from the Oceania pack that I've never used before, the netting. Now I've just discovered that this is flexicolor. What that means is we can make the sort of light mesh that is often used for monkey and big cat habitats rather than the really solid straight sort of fence type mesh that we already have in the game. So in this little area in the islands here, we're gonna squeeze in a clouded leopard habitat. Let's get started. This area is right next to the path that takes people into the islands. You can see the base of the entrance gate there. I think it's gonna be the perfect place to introduce people to the first island animal. So we're gonna take one of the African mud columns and we're gonna use this to build a half dome and then copy it and fill it in with straight parts. So we end up with a habitat that is kind of rectangular in shape and gives a nice area for the clouded leopard. We're just gonna have one of them in here We've got enough room for one, not really enough for two, certainly not by Planet Zoo standards anyway. Most of the animals that we have, we have in pairs for breeding. I figure this would be a clouded leopard from another zoo, which has bred them and you know has more clouded leopards than they have space for now. So we're gonna take one of them off their hands and build a nice little habitat for it here. Now, the great thing about this new netting piece, as you can see here, is that once you've colored it gray, it really looks like the flexible, thin, but very strong metal mesh is often used to keep big cats in. It's normally draped over the entire enclosure, especially ones that are good at climbing, like the clouded leopard. It gives a much more natural look than the old mesh pieces that I've used for habitats like this in the past. So I'm really excited to get stuck into this and make something that looks more realistic than usual. So we've got two of them here. We're gonna curve this one back and use a few of them to get a nice high habitat. We want lots of vertical space for the cat in here. We're gonna put some climbing in for him later, of course. And then we're gonna work with this piece, which is straight, but with those interesting curved bits at the edge, and then some of the actually curved pieces as well. And we'll use a mixture of these. If you get right up close to it, you can kind of see the joins, but from where the guests are, it looks really natural and you can't see any of the gaps in it. it takes a lot of um, fiddling about with to get it to work, but once you've got everything in the right place, it gives you a really cool netted look, just something we haven't really seen before. If you're wondering why we're not in our Africa area today, the reason for that is that the next build there is Gorilla Mountain, which is going to be pretty extensive. I needed something on a slightly smaller scale this week so that I've got enough time to get that together. So there's going to be so much terraforming in that build, along with the fact that just trying to build realistic gorilla habitats is a really lengthy process. There is a lot of things to think about there. Not that this habitat is particularly simple. Getting this mesh right took a long time to get it to look the way that I wanted it to look. But once we've got the externals of the habitat done, inside is going to be a lot simpler. And obviously it's just a lot smaller because we've just got one clouded leopard in here. And we're starting to get something that looks really nice here. We'll keep playing around with the mesh pieces until we get it to look like it is draped off of various supports and hanging down in places like it would do in real life. Just working on one strip at a time as we always do so we can rotate it into place. And then we're gonna put some supports in. So we want a line of supports across the top and another one across the bottom here so that the mesh is actually joined onto something. And then we'll build some main supports in the center of the habitat later on. And a bit more mesh and we've got something we can start to work with. So we're gonna copy this over to the other side so that we get the dome that we need. We need to build a dome and then cut it in half so that the, uh, the rotation trick works. So let's start rotating. So we'll move this, keeping attention at the bottom of the uh, pieces where the mesh joins together. Um, we need to make sure there's no gaps. You can see there's a gap there. So we're just gonna move this in until it's in exactly the right place like so and then we'll keep rotating until we've got a complete circle here. If you want a more detailed explanation of how to use this trick to build circular structures and domes, etc., I go into much more detail in my Building Realistic Terrariums episode of San Bernardino. I'll put a link to that on screen now. Check that out if you want some more info on how to do this. Back to this build, the first part of the structure is done. You can see we've got a perfect dome here, um, and what we're gonna do is take the bottom half of it as you look at it from up here, and get rid of the rest of it. So we need to go into each group and just chop out everything that isn't in the lower half. And we'll end up with the part of the habitat that we need at this point. So we're gonna take the one straight piece that we have here and then start copying this across to make the sides of the habitat. This is much simpler, nice and easy to get this lined up. 
Just get a few of those in here until it is the length that we want it to be. And then we're gonna take that front half that we just made, copy it, rotate it, and add it to the back and we will finally have the structure of the habitat complete. There is, however, a problem that we need to solve. This end of the habitat contains way too many pieces for us to copy it. You'll see in a moment in the top right that the icon that allows us to copy pieces disappears because there's too many of them. And when we've got a problem to solve, you know what that means. It's time for Franchise Masters. So if you need to duplicate something in Planet Zoo and the game won't let you do it because there are too many pieces, the key to get around that is to save it as a blueprint. So we're gonna select what we've got here, save it as a blueprint. If you've got as many blueprints as me, make sure you give it a name that you can immediately be able to remember. Uh, give it a tag, you need at least one tag to save it. And then go back to your blueprints, type it into the search box, and then drop it in. So we're gonna place this here. We're gonna move it so it's exactly over the original that we just copied. So a little adjustment, we can use this as a marker. And then once we've got it in exactly the right spot, like so, what we'll do is turn angle snap on using the space bar and then spin it round so it's in exactly the opposite direction and then we can move it to where we want it to be. It's slightly off kilter here so we're just going to move this across until the supports line up. And there we go, the structure's complete. If you found that useful or you're just enjoying this video then don't forget to hit the like button, it really helps the channel out. What we're doing here is adding some supports into the side of the structure. I didn't want supports on every single one of the panels that we just copied, we only need a few of them so I'm just going to put a couple in manually and then copy them a few times so we've got some of these just to make sure it's structurally sound. Now I've called them the most beautiful animals in the game, it's just my opinion of course but they are really something the clouded leopard. I was lucky enough to see one at the night safari in Singapore a few weeks ago and even in the dark, they're pretty spectacular. They are crepuscular like most cats, so in a habitat like this, you're gonna be most likely to see them either first thing in the morning or in the evening. So you'd wanna make this your first or your last stop in the zoo really to get the best chance of seeing them. We're just doing a little bit of tidying up here and then we are all done with this part of the build and on to the next part. So we need some central supports for this habitat so it looks like it would actually stand up. I don't want just some boring concrete pillars. So what we're gonna use is these fake tree trunks. Uh, these would have like um, steel running through the middle of them. And we're gonna use quite a few of these to make it look like one giant fake tree that is holding this end of the habitat up. And then we'll simply copy it across to the other side and do the same thing there. We'll use this piece upside down to join it onto the mesh at the top. And then we're gonna start cloning the tree trunks because they're not quite tall enough. So we're going to use a few of these like we did in Amazonia and then just angle them inwards so it looks like the tree gets thicker at the base and looks nice and natural and gets it to the exact size that we need it. And while I finish that off, we're just going to nip round the corner to a different habitat in the islands because today I managed to do something in the zoo which only a few weeks ago I described as impossible. Let's check it out. This is Raffles, a Hakamodo dragon, and you may remember a couple of weeks ago me saying how much I wanted him to climb up onto this rock structure, like the dragon that I saw in Singapore Zoo, but that it was impossible due to their hitbox. Well, check this out. I finally managed using about, I think, 10 or 12 different faux rock pieces at the back of the structure to get the traversable area to work, so he can actually climb up here now in franchise mode, and he looks just as majestic as I thought he would up here. It's absolutely amazing. I can't believe I managed to do it. I've always struggled with these guys, but it was really frustrating me that he couldn't get up there, so I thought I'd give it another attempt today, and somehow I managed it. Let's get back to the build. We're gonna copy this completed tree support over to the other side of the habitat, so that we've got two of them now. It's starting to look a bit more structurally sound. We're gonna drop this water um, feeder into the tree so we can hide as much of it as possible because I really don't like it. We'll recolor it and it'll be a lot more subtle like that. We're gonna put some more vines and things like that at the front here. This is one of the main viewing areas, although being meshed, you can sort of see this habitat from any angle, but the majority of the climbing enrichments are gonna be at the front here. So this is gonna be one of the places where the leopard will hopefully spend most of its time. So we want this to be really attractive. So we'll get some vines, maybe some lianas as well, and just start draping them on here. And then we'll get a little piece to attach them on as well so that they don't just look like they're uh, floating there. And then we're gonna finish off the tree supports. So what I'm gonna do here is basically cover them with these basket ferns so that rather than being a bit of an eyesore in the middle of the habitat, they become something really attractive. So we've got three of these. Um, we're gonna use all three of them and just keep rotating them and making sure that none of them look uh, the same and basically just take this all the way down to the bottom of the tree. And once we've got a few of them, we can clone them and make our lives a bit easier. 
Um, once these are covering the whole tree, it becomes a really nice a sort of focal point that also sort of blends into the background, if that makes sense. And then we'll copy the same thing onto the other one. And then we're gonna do the last piece of work in terms of joining the trees onto the main structure. So I was gonna build some more elaborate circular structures. And then I remembered these pieces, these are actually, I think they're limestone or concrete, not really designed for this, but because they're gonna be right on top of the habitat, gonna be miles away from the guests, they actually look really effective. Just make a simple circle like that and then get them so they're centered on the middle of these trees here. Once we lower them down slightly so they're touching the mesh, they're actually really effective and make it look like they're part of the structure, providing the tension for the mesh, along with all these support poles that we've got in here as well. Once that's in place, we can start making it look more realistic with the addition of some more support struts. So we're gonna take just one of the metal poles and start rotating these into place. We'll have a few of these going around this and then we can just copy it across to the other side. We need to slant them as well so they follow the curve of the mesh as it goes down. And then we can get on to the climbing. So this area here is where we're going to place the majority of the climbing for the Clouded Leopard. Um, we're going to be starting with the hammock. This is one of the best enrichment pieces in the game. The animations are brilliant and especially for the Clouded Leopard. Uh, they look just like a domestic cat uh, when they use this. It's absolutely brilliant. So I want that uh, not too front and centre because they need a bit of privacy but quite near the front so that the guests can see them. And then in front of that, we'll put some climbing in that they can actually climb. We're gonna join it onto the hammock. They won't actually be able to climb up here to get onto the hammock because the hammock doesn't work like that. But it'll look like that. They'll be able to climb up these logs and they will also jump up and use the hammock as well, which you'll see in the end cinematics. I decided to use these natural tree trunks. They're nice and thick. Hopefully they will work with the clouded leopard. The climbing on this animal is really buggy, but I just wanted something natural looking. I didn't want to just use the normal climbing logs. I thought these would look a lot more natural. Uh, we're going to use some of the massive tree trunks or the, the ends of the massive tree trunks as well to cover up the joins between the logs so we can make it look like just one really big log rather than uh, two or three of them joined together. So I have to play around with the angles a bit to get that effect. I hardly ever use these tree trunks because they are really big but if you turn them upside down, the other end of it, which you can see here, really interesting, really nice um, texture on it and the way the wood's all broken off at the end. So that makes a really nice sort of visual. And then if we cover it up with some more of these basket ferns so you can't see the join, we can start rotating the other log and we'll end up with something that looks like a log twice as long. We'll get another one on the end as well and you can see there the effect of the log that I was talking about. The final stage of the build is to get a shelter in for the Clouded Leopard. So we're going to drop in one of the shelters that we've been using throughout the zoo lately and then customise it to suit his needs. So it needs to be smaller to fit into the habitat. So we're going to cut it in half. We don't have a whole herd of hoofstock in here, just one small Clouded Leopard. And even though we did originally build this for hoofstock, with a few adjustments, I think it serves perfectly for cats or loads of other different types of animal. And then the final touch is to cut out some of this mesh put some more supports in and just get a proper entrance that the keepers can get through. Uh, we're gonna hide the keeper gate inside the door of the building uh, that you can see there. And that's the habitat done. Let's take a look at it. Here he comes, they are so gorgeous. I purposely kept the ground cover pretty intensive in this habitat so that the, um, the cat gets quite a lot of cover as they are notoriously shy. And then we've got little clearings here and there, like this one where the guests will be able to see him. Just looks so cool, kind of stalking through the forest. It helped that we had some really nice forest here already that I built back when we built the islands. I've just had to move it around a bit rather than create the whole thing from scratch. I used this rock to put a nice open area here near the front as well. If you ever goes there, you'll get a really good view. Let's check out the, um, the hammock. I love the way they jump up onto this trunk and then drop down from above onto the hammock itself and then go around in circles like a uh, like a domestic cat. Um, I'm assuming that's what clouded leopards do in real life. I've never seen one go to sleep. <laughs> I'm guessing Frontier got that right, but it is impossibly cute. This is why I call them the most beautiful animals in the game. Just look at this guy, absolutely amazing. Let's take a long distance view of the habitat. I think it looks amazing behind the barley gate there. Those netting pieces really give the effect that I was going for when I came up with the idea for this habitat. This is where the islands was at the start of today. And this is where we are now. Along with the flying fox forest in the background, I think that really completes the area. Just time to take a quick look at the members monolith. Thank you so much to all of you who've joined. If you want to see your name in the zoo, then hit the join button. I'll see you again next week when we will be back in Africa. Thanks for watching.